Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Holly Randall Unfiltered. Today, I have the beautiful, award-winning performer, Gianna Dior. Hi, Gianna. Hi. Thank you for having me. I'm so excited to be here. Of course. I'm so glad that you're here. I've been wanting to have you on for a while, and I was glad that we could make it happen. I know. Finally. Yeah. So um, let's get started from the beginning. People always like this question, so I like to kind of start with this question because it kind of gives us all like an understanding of where you came from. Mm -hmm. How did you get started in the adult industry? So I was on Tinder, the dating app, just like looking for dick. And I lived in Alabama at the time. I was in school for psychology and I was working two jobs. So I was like really struggling and I matched with someone on Tinder who was from Miami. He was like a performer and he was like, have you ever thought about doing porn? And I was like, no, I don't know why I had never thought about it, but and he was like, just come to Miami and do one scene and see if you like it. And I'm like, all right, fuck it. Like, I have nothing to lose here. So I just did it. And I loved it. And I just kept doing scenes. And I never went home. Wow. Yeah. That's like, that's kind of, I mean, you didn't, you, so you had never thought about doing porn before. No. And then someone's like, just like do one scene. And then you were like, fuck, like you didn't put that much thought into it. You're like, fuck it. I'll just try it. Yeah. I'm a very impulsive person. So I was just like, I mean, what's the worst that could happen? Yeah. And I like did it very safely too. Mm -hmm. Like I made sure I had a hotel to stay at. Like I didn't have to like be in a weird place with him at any time. Mm -hmm. So I worked out obviously, but yeah, uh, it paid off. Paid off. So who can I ask who the performer was? Um, Tony something. Tony from Miami. Yeah, no okay, one it doesn't really matter. If I don't know who it is, it doesn't matter. <laughs> um, who is the C who is the company that you did your first scene for? Um, it was for like one of his little like OnlyFans type websites, oh. and then I started doing them for like Reality Kings. Okay, and Reality Kings and Mofos were like the first ones that I did, and then like Bang Bros, like Bang Bus was one of my first scenes, and mm -hmm. that's what really like made me blow up a little bit, I think, is mm -hmm. that scene. That's like one of my most highest viewed scenes. What's the scene specifically? Um, Gianna Dior, Bang Bus, something. <laughs> but so Bang Bus, they just like pick you up in a bus. Yeah. And then they drive around and you have sex with someone in the back, right? Yeah, they act like they just picked up a random stranger right. on the side of the road and everyone believed it for some reason because I'm a great actress. <laughs> and <laughs> And so I guess everyone thought that it was real because they had never seen me before. Mm -hmm. So maybe that's why. I don't know. But it's fucking hot in that bus. It was a long yeah. day. Yeah. I'm like, at least it like gave me views. How was having the sex like when the bus was moving? That was kind of hard. I kept like hitting my head on the ceiling and stuff. <laughs> like it was like not the best setup. But. It literally seems like one of the trickier scenes to film. Definitely. And you know what's so funny about Bang Bus is that they've absolutely fucking ruined wheels on the bus for me. So I have a baby now. Yeah. Who's nine months old. And nine so already? Mm -hmm, nine months old. I know it's crazy. I feel like that was like two months ago. I know. Oh my God. I know. Her Dang. birthday's in October. So Wheels on the Bus is a popular children's song. And uh, we watch Coco Melon because everybody with the chat, you watch it like, I watch and you don't have kids. Yeah. Are you I like really high when you watch it? Because sometimes, sometimes. or like Bubble Guppies. That's a great kid show. That that's a really good one. I love kid shows. I don't know why. I just, I mean, I guess it's like very innocent, it takes you back to like a simpler time. But yeah, so Coco Melon has a whole thing about wheels on the bus yeah. where they like make a cardboard bus. Yeah. And, and every time. So anyways, so there was a scene on Bang Bus where a guy was making, was not making, a girl was blowing a guy and he told her to sing wheels or hum wheels on the bus while she was blowing him. And it fucking ruined. And every time I hear that song, I think of that scene. Yeah, that would be a turn off. I don't know about that. Yeah, it's extreme. It's kind of like disturbing. And like yeah. now that I hear that song all the time because I have a kid, I'm like, oh, I always think about this fucking bang bus scene. It's so bad. <laughs> That's hilarious. I want to do another bang bus, but I want to be the driver. Oh. Like reverse bang bus. So wait, if you're the driver, then you're not having the sex, are you? Or do you drive the bus somewhere, park it, and then have sex? Maybe I drive it, pick someone up, and then I make whoever I'm with drive the bus and do the scene in the back. I don't really, I don't even remember how we did that. 
How were we doing that? There must have been someone driving. Uh, yeah. So there must have been two guys in it, right? Yeah. That's what I think. Yeah. He just drove it. <laughs> Do they have like a bang bus version where it's like a girl picking up girls off of the? I think so. I think there has been at least like a couple of them. I feel like them. that would be, that would do well. Yeah. Maybe you should start that. Okay. That should be like your only line. Your new line. Gianna Dior like picks up random chicks on the street and bangs them. <laughs> it's just funny that everyone believed that it was real. And like, you think I would just get in a random van that offered me money? Yeah. Well, to like get in and have sex with them? Like, I mean, I guess it's a fantasy, but. Yeah. I mean, so many of those porn, those like reality porn scenes are, are very much played to make it seem like it's real. Like the, the college party scenes, mm -hmm. you know, and they, it really seems like there's a camera at a college party and like these drunk girls are just like, they'll do anything for cash. Yeah. But it's completely set up because first of all, like this is what a lot of people don't understand. And this is why like the Kim Kardashian tapes are like fucking not real. And like the Paris Hilton, mm -hmm. like leaked tapes are not leaked. You cannot release and distribute content um, legally without IDs and releases. So yeah. none of that stuff could go online without IDs and releases. Yeah. Kim Kardashian's movie could not be distributed by Vivid without releases I and thought, IDs. I thought she like sued him because there was no paperwork. No, no, no. there's no, there's no fucking way that Vivid would release a scene like that without that. Yeah. No way. They're not that dumb. Yeah. That's crazy. I yeah. thought he just like posted on the internet or something. Like. That might be different. So apparently it's interesting. If you guys want to hear more, go back to my podcast with Kevin Blatt, actually KB. He, this is actually one of my earliest podcasts, but he, um, is the celebrity sex tape broker. Mm -hmm. And he actually explains how the whole Paris Hilton video came about. Mm -hmm. So apparently it was initially released, um, without her consent. Okay. on like a website and then so she found out about it and then was somehow co I don't know she had a discussion with whoever released it or whatnot that look like you can make money off of this like this is out there anyways why don't you sign on to this and like go back and shoot extra footage and actually make money off of this and she was like okay yeah fuck it yeah so initially it was released without her consent or knowledge and then she decided to sign on make money off of it. She went back, shot more content, Smart. but then still like denies that she had any part in it. But yeah. That's kind of part of the whole marketing thing. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Damn. I know. Right. That's crazy. I mean, now really, I guess someone could put out a video without my consent, but like I'm already on the internet. So, <laughs> well, yes, they could. Um, but if they don't have your IDs and releases, you mm -hmm. can send them a DMCA takedown notice or yeah. sue them. So, Interesting. okay. Anyways, <laughs> for anybody who wanted to learn about like the legal legalities behind making porn. Um, so what age were you when you first started in the industry? I turned 21 that week. Okay. So I was 20. So you were 20. And I went to Vegas with my biological mom. And we were in Vegas like a couple days after I did like my first scene. And I just didn't tell her because I'm like, I don't know what I'm going to do. Like, mm -hmm. if I'm even going to continue with this. I mean, I knew, but so I just didn't say anything. And mm -hmm. I don't even know if she knows now. I'm sure she does, but I don't she's talk to her. She has to know now. She has to know now. But yeah. But like when I started porn, I told myself like either I'm going to do porn or I'm not going to do porn. Like if I'm mm -hmm. going to do it, I'm going to yeah. do it big. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did. So like I'm not just only going to have like one or two videos of me up on the internet like yeah. forever. Like if I'm going to already have one, might as well just do like that's the thing. That's the thing. And and that's so true. It's like you, if you're going to do one, you may as well do a thousand because yeah. that one will be up there forever and will haunt you forever. If, if it's something that you wish you hadn't done. Right. So you may as well like jump full force into it. Exactly. Do you think that that was like a good age for you to start? Or do you think, wish that, cause I know some girls who started younger, wish they'd started later. Some girls feel like, yeah, I just I definitely feel like 21 is a great age to yeah. start. Right. Um I just feel like the if you're a teenager doing porn, it's just kind of makes me feel yucky. Mm -hmm. Like I feel like I'm working with a child. Yeah. So I I don't know. I mean, I'm definitely more like responsible and like older mentally than like other people my age, 
and even then I felt like I was like kind of on the cusp of like maybe I did this too young Mm -hmm. but yeah I definitely don't think that like teenagers should be able to do porn it's kind of like it's tricky though right because if the government has decided that you're an adult by the age of 18 if you can go you know, to prison yeah, um, and be tried as an adult in 18. If you can go uh, join the army, apparently you can join the army at 17 was something that I learned. Mm. Yeah, I didn't know that. Um, all of these, these things, then it's kind of like, then technically you're an adult. Yeah. I guess you should be allowed to do porn, but you're not allowed to drink alcohol right. until you're 21. I don't know. I'm, I don't really have, like, I understand the argument against, Porn, people starting porn later mm-hmm. because I definitely think that some girls into it, get into it too young and they don't really think about the consequences and they don't think about exactly. how it will affect their life. Um, but I also do know some girls who got in super young, like Sasha Gray, mm-hmm. like a Bella Danger, who fucking like killed it. Yeah. And like kind of knew what they were doing and came in with the sense of like, yeah. And more mentally prepared. I mean, some people are older than their years. Yeah. So I guess it just depends on the person. It definitely does. Like I've met people who are like, even like around my age, like I'm 24 mm-hmm. and like even girls I meet who are in porn now, I'm like, uh, I don't know if you should be doing porn. Like, do oh, you, totally. Do you know where you are? Like, do you know, <laughs> do you know what's happening right now? Yeah. Like, so it kind of like freaks me out a little. Like if you are not fully cognitive of everything that's going on around you, it's mm-hmm. like, you shouldn't be doing this. Yeah. There's just some people that are just kind of like in that world where they're just floating around and yeah. just doing random things. Like, and well, well, I just want a Gucci bag. Well. Yeah. I'll never forget once I was working on a set for Adam and Eve. This is so long ago. And there was this girl that was doing a scene and I definitely felt like she should not be there. And um, I was just a photographer for the for the scene. Like it wasn't my production or anything. And I, and I remember I asked her like, why are you doing this? She's like, oh, I'm trying to get enough money uh, to raise bail to get my boyfriend out of jail. Oh my God. Was like, that's the, probably the worst reason yeah. you could be doing it. I was like, uh, oh I don't my see, God. I don't see a great future for you yeah. here in this industry. Oh my God. Shit. That's sad. Yeah. It was really sad. So onto, onto, um, happier topics. Uh, does penis size matter? <laughs> Okay, to a degree, I think it matters, but it to me it really matters what you do with your dick. Like mm-hmm. if even if you have like a smaller or even like average sized dick, if you're able to fuck good, then it doesn't really matter. Mm-hmm. Cuz like if your dick is too big, then it's like not enjoyable. Like it just hurts. Mm-hmm. Um my favorite kind of dick is like thick kind of dick and Mm -hmm. like a little bit long but not long to where it's like in my intestines like Mm -hmm. I don't want it to like get all the way up into my stomach it kind of yeah it just hurts so do you ever see guys who have such a big dick that you're just like I can't do I can't work with that guy like I just can't do it well I like to take things as a challenge (laughs) (laughs) it's like dread like he has like the fucking probably the biggest dick in porn I'm assuming Mm -hmm. And I was like, I'm going to do my first interracial scene with him. Mm -hmm. And I was like, had the worst anxiety up into it. Like I was terrified. I was like, fuck, I'm going to like blow this scene. Like I'm going to do so bad. And I took his whole dick and like went like mostly into my mouth. Like I did it very well. I don't know how, but he's also like very gentle though. So Mm -hmm. like, I don't know. I kind of psyched myself out, but I don't know. Like it was still enjoyable. I think he just, he knew how to use his dick. Yeah. Cause like, I'm sure he's fully aware that his dick is way bigger than yeah. any men's I've ever seen in my entire life. And he's like able to still have sex with people. So yeah, I haven't met him, but I heard he's really nice. He's so nice. Like yeah. people with huge dicks, I feel like have bigger egos, but like he's the nicest person. And like, he was so gentle and like made sure he wasn't hurting me and it was a good scene. I love that scene. Oh, that's so sweet. Yeah. So um, now, why do you think that guys in porn have to have such big penises? This is a question that I get a lot, so I want to see what you think. I actually don't think men in porn have, like, big dicks. Like, hmm. the ones that I work with the most have, like, average size dicks. Maybe, like, a little bit bigger than, like, normal, but... I don't know. I'm sure it's kind of like a viewing type thing. Like there's people who just want to see girls take bigger dicks. Like it's like a 
kink of theirs. Mm -hmm. But like really, like I don't work with tons of people where I'm like, wow, your dick is like really big. Mm -hmm. Like there's like only a few of them I can think of that. Yeah. That's like actually like you have a big dick. Yeah. Um, I think that I think that porn's a fantasy. So obviously everything's exaggerated, right? Which is why a lot of girls have like big butts or like big boobs. It's just Mm -hmm. like it's kind of like a caricature of real life. Yeah. Um, But there's also like I can tell you from like a photographer standpoint that there needs to be like a certain length to the penis in order to be able to see it it. and have penetration at the same time. Ah. So like if it's kind of small, then when the bodies are pressed together, especially if the girl's a big ass, like you can't see the penetration because there needs to be enough length that – there can be some penis in the vagina, but also like enough that oh, there's yeah. space between the bodies right. that you can get light in there and you can photograph it. That's a it. really good. So. Wow. That makes sense now. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Cause it's, um, it's funny because I used to shoot, <laughs> I used to shoot a lot of soft core stuff for like the sex guide book series. Yeah. And, um, shooting guys with big dicks was like a huge problem because like hiding their penises was really hard. Like I remember I used Ramon a few times and I was always, always like, Ramon, I'm gonna have to like fucking tape your dick to the inside of your leg. Like it keeps popping out. You're killing me here. And then there was this other performer who had like kind of a smaller penis and he was like perfect because I was like, I could easily hide his dick, but yeah. Yeah. So it's like the opposite for when you shoot porn. Okay. Cause when I would shoot this other performer who had a smaller penis, it was actually hard to get the penetration yeah the girl would have to like really pop her hip out and was, yeah that makes tough. sense yeah. that's so crazy i never even thought about it that way yeah if you were behind the camera you would you would I like all the time see. you would see that yeah. so but damn yeah so who are some of you, speaking of big dicks who are some of your favorite male performers um manuel ferrara is probably like my number one favorite mm-hmm. um i really like mick blue and Jules Jordan doesn't really like perform too much anymore, but like he, I love working with him. Like when he does work with me, mm-hmm. um, those are like my top three, I think those okay. are like my favorite people. One, cause like they're all like nice and chill people. Like, and like, honestly, like this sounds really lazy, but like they do most of the work. <laughs> <laughs> No, that's good. You need that. You know, they're there to make you look good. So the worst are like the guys who like expect me to do everything. And it's like, yes, I will contribute. But like I get tired after a certain point. Yeah. But like those three guys like don't get tired. Like they just keep going. Yeah. And I just like go along with whatever they're doing. Because also too, like it's the girl has to do more work before the scene. Because you have pretty girls. Sometimes you also have box covers. Yeah. Sometimes you have like a whole tease that you have to shoot. Yeah. You know, you've been there in makeup since like 9 a.m. or something. And the guy can cruise in at like noon. Yeah. And then just do the, do scene, the scene and he leaves. But you have all this shit that you have to do before the scene even starts. Yeah. So like by then I'm already like, okay, I'm yeah. ready. I yeah. just want to do the scene, go home. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Man, that's like the best though. It's like when the guy knows what they're doing. Mm-hmm. And then I – like these are also people I can trust that like I'm gonna have a good scene like Mm -hmm. something good will come out of this it's not gonna look like shit and like people actually enjoy watching this scene how do you feel about working with new male talent like do you have like a I don't want to work now that you've like you're an established performer and like you're very popular do you get to say like I don't want to work with new male talent so actually earlier this year I was getting booked like almost every time with a new performer Mm -hmm. and I was like okay yeah like I'll try it like I'm open to anything and like 99% of the time they couldn't get their dick hard they were struggling the whole time and everyone was saying it's because they think I'm intimidating and I'm like I don't think that's it like I'm not intimidating at all I'm so nice but like I think they were just like nervous maybe to be working with like a performer that they'd heard of and like that totally had like won awards whatever but I'm like, no, like, I just want to have sex with you and, like, go home. Like, it's yeah. not like we're, <laughs> yeah. I don't know. But so before this year, I was totally open to, like, working with brand new man ta- male talent, even if it's their first scene. But now I kind of have, like, got off that train. Yeah. It happened way too many times for me to, like, keep doing it. I was like, okay, you got to, I don't have time to waste. And, like, there were scenes that we had to cancel and, like, 
reschedule and all kinds of shit. And I'm like, I just don't have time for this. Like I yeah. want to come to work and do my scene. And it's like the worst when you have to like call a scene because the guy can't yeah. get his dick hard. It's just like, it's just it's the worse. most like heart wrenching moment because he's trying so hard yeah. and he knows that he's letting everybody down. Yeah. And so they get in that whole like head fuck and you just see mm-hmm. it. Like you just see it going down here. Yeah. You're like, dude, you're never going to. It's no, all just give me mental- 10 more minutes. I know. It's all a mental game for them too. Like if one thing happens that mm-hmm. day, it's the whole the whole thing's fucked up. Yep. So I always try to be like super nice to them. Like don't fuck with them in any way. Even if they're like pissing me off or like annoying me mm-hmm. or something, I'm just going to like, okay, let it go. I just want to do a good scene. But the ones that I experienced this year actually like had a good attitude about it. Like they were like not angry that they couldn't get hard. Yeah. Like I've had some people like – when they couldn't get hard, like get pissed at me and like yeah. try to act like it's my fault. And I'm like, it has nothing to do with me. You just can't get your dick hard. Yeah. Like, sorry, but like, don't <gasps> like, they're just trying to put the blame on someone. That's the worst thing ever. Yeah. Like I have nothing to do with it. Yeah. They got Brad Armstrong calls it, um, when the excuse bus rolls in. Yeah. And that's like when they're like, oh, I didn't like eat this morning or my favorite is, oh, I did leg day yesterday. So like all my blood's yeah. like gone to my legs and not my penis. And I'm like, and it's like, that's fine. But like then <laughs> cancel the scene. But or don't do leg day the day the before. Day before. Scene. Yeah. Like that's a thing. And every experienced male performer figures out whatever their um, strategy is right. to be able to perform. Every guy's different. Like yeah I've, it's so interesting talking to different guys about their methods charles darrow like does a whole like breathing meditation thing okay. make sure like he doesn't have caffeine like he's like very specific about like what he does and and every guy's got their their thing and then right. they know like how to bring it and then they're yeah. consistent yeah totally i had a guy i think also earlier this year this has not been the greatest year um, <laughs> This guy like could not get his dick hard and he's like, well, I just feel like you're performing and I had to take a moment and I'm like, I am. (laughs) I'm like, I, I'm a performer. I'm like, what do you mean? He's like, well, I just, I need to feel that you, that you're into me. I just feel like you're not into me. I don't know how this man got his dick hard after I said this to him, but I was like, sir, I'm absolutely not into you in any way whatsoever. Like I'm not attracted to you. I wouldn't be having sex with you if I was not on set right now. Like, I don't know how he did the scene after that. Like, I was such a bitch to him after maybe that. Maybe that's what he needed. I know. That's what I'm thinking. I'm like, maybe his kink is, like, girls being mean to him. Yeah. But I was like, don't blame me because you can't get into a car. Let's say I'm performing. I'm like, I am performing. Like, just because I'm not, like, making out with you the whole time and, like, all over your body and, like, touching yeah. you everywhere doesn't mean that, like, I don't want to do the scene with you. Like, I yeah. wouldn't be here if I, like, hated you. It is – I mean, it is a job. It's a job. Like we're all totally. performing. Yeah. 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 That's a little naive. Yeah. He literally, like his exact words were like, I just feel like you're performing. And I'm like, I am. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> Are you not? Are you not performing? <laughs> I thought we had a connection. Yeah. Oh my God, that's what we were doing here. Do you ever have guys um, like try to like think that you have a real connection and try to like, there was this one performer who used to send girls flowers after every scene it's funny because i had a conversation with elsa jean about him um but no it was yeah he's no longer in the industry um but he was for a while and he's you know great performer and actually extremely good looking he was awesome but um at the beginning i think it was like a french thing or something it's not manuel people because every time i bring this up they're like oh it's manuel it's It's fucking it's not manuel Manuel would never send flowers no But it was when this guy first started and I think like he thought like I'm French and I'm charming and he's like he always wanted to send girls flowers afterwards and he'd ask me for their addresses and I'm like I'm not giving you yeah. their address like can't just, yeah. it freaks girls out when you do they don't like it. Yeah maybe if he like brought flowers to set I would be like I would think that was really sweet but like I don't want you to like know my address. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know that's just kind of weird. Yeah. But have you ever had that like some guy try to it's happened to me a few times where, like, after the scene, guys will, like, ask for my phone number to, like, quote, shoot content. Yeah. That's the new dating. Yeah. It's the yeah, new dating. Shoot content. So what I do, I, sh- I put my number in their phone as Spiegler's number because I just, like, know so it by heart. Smart. And it happened one time. Like, I went to Spiegler's house right after my scene one day and we were just hanging out and he gets a call from this number and it was the male talent that I worked with that day. And he's like, hey, uh, is this... 
is Gianna there? And he's like, he's like, don't ever fucking call her again. <laughs> <laughs> so for those of you who don't know, uh, Mark Spiegler is her agent. So when she says Spiegler. Yeah, Spiegler is my yeah. agent. He's the fucking best. But yeah, and he always handles it so well, like in a way that I would not be able to handle it. I'm like, okay, I don't feel like dealing with this dude. I'm just going to act like my phone number is Spiegler's phone number. So, but that was like the only time that they actually like followed through and like called mm -hmm. me quote me yeah and it's not actually me that's funny okay if we talk about favorite guys favorite girls um obviously angela white yeah. i love working with everyone her. we actually joke that this podcast should also possibly be titled everybody loves angela white because yeah. her name comes up a lot yeah and everybody loves her i actually shot her day before yesterday okay yeah like shot her or like did a podcast with her no shot her oh shot her yeah okay. i shot we shot uh content for our sites i shot her here just nice. solo stuff it was okay. fucking epic yeah i love her she's just an amazing performer like she really knows what she's doing yeah. like sometimes i get girls where i'm like i don't know if they can like carry a scene like i'm not sure like if i can do certain things to them whatever you can do whatever you want to angela white and like yeah. she can do whatever she wants to me like i don't <laughs> care yeah but um i love her and jill cassidy is also one of my favorites like mm. she's just so fun to be around and like I don't know. She just has really good energy and she's a good performer. So I like her. I know you probably have like a ton of favorites. It's a hard question to answer because there's a lot of girls in the industry and it's it always is. like you end up leaving somebody out. Yeah. I would say Riley Reed, but I've only worked with her one time and it was like for her, for her website. Mm -hmm. And I want to work with her like all the time, but like she just really doesn't like shoot like porn, porn too much anymore. Mm -hmm. She does like her own stuff. So mm -hmm. Um, that was the only porn star I knew coming into the industry. Like I didn't like ever watch porn. I wasn't like a porn fan. Hmm. So somehow I guess I knew her like through social media or something. I was just been following her for years. And so like, I really looked up to her and like the day I met her was like such a fangirl moment. I was like, this is so embarrassing, but like <laughs> I'm obsessed with you, but she was so nice. And like, yeah. and we finally did like a scene together. So. She's really sweet. Yeah, I like her. It's crazy how famous she's become, actually. I shot her last year, maybe two years ago, with Alina Lopez for Twisties, and we rented out this dance studio. And she she shows up. I think she got an Uber, so I had to come out in the street to meet her mm -hmm. um, because there was construction going on right in front of the studio. And she was wearing, I don't know if she still does this, but she often wears, like, these onesies to set, like these bare onesie yeah. like just something like kind of like comfortable because obviously you know she's gonna be changing into something else yeah. and so she shows up in like this bare onesie which is kind of like already captures people's attention and like I said there was construction in the front so I get her on the street I bring her in and then I actually went back out to ask the construction guys when they were gonna be done jackhammering because we yeah. had this shoot scene and they were like is that really read in there <laughs> In the bear costume. Yeah. And they, they like totally, they totally like recognized her. I'm like, if I said yes, will you stop jackhammering? Yeah. That's so funny. I was just going to ask, like, how did you do the scene with the construction going on? They actually so ended up leaving. Like, okay. We didn't end up shooting the the video until we did all this setup stuff in the beginning. So by the time we were shooting it, they, you know, construction guys usually leave at like four. Yeah. So we were able to do it. I remember the last time you shot me, there was the neighbor was like in their backyard talking on their phone as loud as they possibly could. Oh, yeah. I remember we had to yeah. be like, hey, can you, like we had to call the homeowner and be like, hey, can you like tell them to stop screaming? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> or at least like go inside your house. Like you don't have to be like at the fence talking on your phone as loud as you can. Yeah. That was like the worst. And the That's... baby bird flew into the window and died. Oh, I don't know. Or it didn't die. It like broke its wing or something. You like helped it. You brought it back to life. I did? Yeah. I think I have a video of it somewhere. I, I mean, I did. I, was, <laughs> I, mean, I know. I was back to life all the time. <laughs> How do I not remember that. I remember the girl talking on the phone. I just remember that day very, like, like it was yesterday for some reason. I don't know. <laughs> that was a great shoot. That was with Emily Addison for Twisties. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that was a good that shoot. That was a good one. Um, okay. Anyone else in the industry that you haven't worked with that you would really love to work with? Um, Kissa Sins. You haven't worked with her? I've never worked with Kissa Sins. Oh, she's amazing. when I came in was when she kind of like retired for a minute. And mm -hmm. she was like, I'm so jealous of her. She was like traveling all around, like doing whatever she wanted, scuba diving, like all, time, all kinds of stuff. So I was like really wanting to work with her. And now like she's like contracted with browsers, I think. So mm -hmm. 
I'm just going to hit them up and be like, hey. Well, I mean, you know, she's contracted with Browsers, which means basically she's contracted with MindGeek, which means she will probably be doing a twisty scene soon. Yeah. So when they give me the production order with Kiss of Sins, I could be like, hey, you know who's never worked with her? Gianna Dior. I've been dying to work with her. I feel like we have very similar energy Mm -hmm. and like, I don't know. She's just, she's so nice too. I love her. She's a great performer. Um, she's really, like Angela, she's really into the scene. Right. Like when you, when that guy said to you, like, I feel like you're just performing, I feel like she's kind of one of those girls who's kind of not. Yeah. Like she's actually really into it. It's funny. She has this thing. When I first shot her, she told me that we had to do all the standing positions first because she orgasms so frequently that her legs turn to jelly and she can't stand anymore. That happens to me too. Really? Yes. I didn't think about doing it like that though. Yeah. But also I hate doing standing positions because I'm always like paranoid that they're going to drop me. Yeah. And I know that they're not, but, and I've never been dropped, but I'm still just like scared. Like don't pick me up. But that makes sense. I should do that because I come so often. Like it's so easy for me to come. Like, there's been one scene where I like actually like didn't come and I was pissed after and I was like <laughs> I was so mad and it was like a scene for like a showcase I was doing and I like told the director I was like don't put that scene in my showcase. I was like I think it's very easy that like to tell if I'm like faking an orgasm mm-hmm. so I'm like don't put that one in there cuz then I look like shit and people are going to say that I'm faking cuz I am. So he didn't put it in. I'm like okay. That's good to know because another question I get a lot of times is like, are the performers faking orgasms? And I'm like, it depends on the girl. Yeah. And it depends on the scene. I try not to, but like for me, yeah, it depends on the scene, depends on the guy. Mm -hmm. Like some guys just cannot make me come. Mm -hmm. If their energy is off for me, like I have like a connection type of thing with people. Like I don't even care what you look like. It's like if I like your personality, Mm -hmm. then I'm like really into it. Mm -hmm. But the guy who told me that I was like performing, I just – didn't vibe with him like he I don't know I just didn't like his attitude like his personality it's like I was not into the scene but I'm like I'm not gonna this isn't a dating service like I'm not gonna yeah act like I am in love with you and I don't even like you yeah that's true even though ironically you got into the adult industry via tinder I know (laughs) that is weird there's an article that says that like I think it was just for like the headline I did Mm -hmm. like a um like an English broadcasting type thing and they um they did like a um what's it called like a documentary on me basically Mm -hmm. and they said um I forgot where this was going. When was you were, uh, you, how you started on Tinder. Okay. And that got you into the industry. So they put like, okay, she was on Tinder looking for love. And I'm like, okay, that sounds really nice. But like, no, I was just looking to like suck a dick or two. And I did. Like, that's always what I use. Like, I always just use dating apps to like mm-hmm. find dudes to fuck. Cause like, mm-hmm. I'm just not good with like going out and finding someone. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, okay, well. At Though least. you never know, I met my husband on Tinder. Really? Yeah, and I was not going on there looking for a husband. That's crazy. So you never know. Interesting. Do you have are, do you have problems using dating apps now? Because I know a lot of dating apps kick sex workers off. Yeah, I'm banned from Tinder now and Hinge. Jeez. Now I'm on Bumble. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. I noticed that like if you use your real name and you don't put like any type of suggestive picture at all if it's mm-hmm. literally just selfies mm-hmm. then like I haven't gotten kicked off yet but sometimes I feel like they think that I'm impersonating myself mm. like they think that I'm saying that I'm someone I'm not but I'm like no it's actually me yeah that's pretty common catfishing on yeah. dating sites for sure yeah totally yeah all right guys we are going to take a quick commercial break and Then we're going to come back and we're going to talk about so much more. So hang tight. We'll see you in a minute. If you're here, it's probably because you're a fan of my podcast, Holly Randall Unfiltered. Well, that's great because I'm a fan of my podcast too. Now, if you don't know what Patreon is, it's a crowdfunding platform that allows people to make contributions on a monthly basis. Because this podcast costs money to make, maybe even more so than others. I'm obsessed with quality. So since the beginning, I have always recorded in a studio, had a professional sound engineer, and recorded professional video. All of these things cost money, as you can imagine. 
And I also made a pretty scary decision this year to cut down on my directing gigs so that I could focus more on this podcast, which is why I need your help now more than ever. But don't worry, I'm not asking you to give me something for nothing. In exchange for your contributions, I offer so many perks. For example, access to the live streams of all of my interviews, a bonus podcast that I do called My LA Porn Life, Q and A's where the stars answer your specific questions, behind the scenes interviews, merchandise such as mugs, shirts, and stickers, access to my private Snapchat, and so much more. You can join for as little as $5 a month and help me change the way the world sees the adult industry and sex work. So take a look around and see everything that I have to offer. I really hope that you'll join and be a part of our little community. Hello, everybody. We are back. So I have one more like favorite person question before we move on to some other things. And you're not allowed to say me just because I'm here. But who's your favorite director to work with? Holly Randall. (laughs) (laughs) Um, I mean, we know that's the truth, but let's pretend it's not me. Just for podcasting. No, um, Caden Cross. Mm. I really like the way that she does things and like the fucking ideas that she has are like out of this world, like so creative. So like she makes things come to life, Mm -hmm. like whatever you're thinking, like she makes it happen. So I just like how creative she is and how like also like Vix and like the way that they shoot things is really pretty. So yeah, they put a lot of money into that stuff. Yeah, they do. Yeah. (laughs) I remember I had her I had her on for an interview. I think we were uh, talking about her movie Abigail. And I was like, "So what was your I'll never forget this." I was like, "So what was your budget?" She's like, oh, "I don't think I had a budget." I'm like, "I hate you." Oh my god. <laughs> then this is like this is when I was shooting for Wicked and I was like strug I had to like fight for like a budget of like $24,000 for a whole movie. Oh my god. That's like I had to fight for that budget. That's just like male female talent rate right there. Uh, dude, it was fucking ridiculous. Maybe location. That's crazy. It was really tough. Um so yeah, when she said that I was like, I hate you. But you're right. She's um she's really smart and I love the stuff that she's been shooting. It's been like yeah. really amazing. Definitely like elevated the game for sure. Hell yeah, for yeah. sure. She's an incredible, incredible director. So that I I think that is a good choice. Um, if there was one thing about the adult industry that you could change, what would it be? Ooh. Um, maybe, like, the way that things are, like, scheduled and, like, how everything has to be kind of the same each time. Um, like, sometimes I just want to, like, turn on the camera and, like, do whatever the hell I want and, like, shoot whatever I want. And, like, that count- this sounds kind of selfish, but, like... <laughs> I don't know. I just feel like it's gotten a little bit like boring when it comes to like personality. Like people don't really get to see my personality until I show them like on social media or like on my OnlyFans or something. Like they don't really get to see the performers as people. Mm -hmm. And I feel like maybe I don't know how you would change that. Maybe even just like an interview before each scene or like maybe just like film everything up into uh, until like a behind the scene like a behind the scenes thing yeah like yeah. do more behind the scenes stuff and put it as like the intro to the scene mm-hmm. that way people can see that like i'm not just like two holes i'm like an actual person cuz like sometimes my fans are surprised that i like actually have personality and i'm like yeah i'm a person <laughs> <laughs> you're not just a stepdaughter stuck in a doggy door exactly <laughs> yes that was literally me yeah I know <laughs> I read, when I was looking for like um questions to ask you I read about that and I was like oh let me I'm gonna ask her what her most ridiculous scene she's ever filmed is and I think that was it that might be your answer I think that was it yeah the problem was I, I guess I was supposed to go like through the doggy doggy door at some point and I was not aware. So I'm like trying to get through the doggy door after they tell me to. And like my hips got stuck. So I like could not even get through the doggy door. And that was like the whole point of the scene was to like get me through the doggy door. And I'm like, what girl could you have found who would fit through this tiny doggy door? Yeah. But I mean, it was fun to shoot, but it was just kind of like, this is hard. 
<laughs> I'm like on my hands and knees on the concrete and I'm like can I have a pillow over my knees like and then also too like did the sides of the doggy door like scrape hurt. against you yeah. I would imagine that that would have happened I had like marks on my side of course yeah. yeah but back to what you were saying about people not being able to see your personality and you kind of like briefly mentioned your OnlyFans I think that's why platforms like OnlyFans are doing so well because fans do want to see your personality yeah they do want to see like the kind of scene that you would film if you had that kind of control. Right. They do want to know you as a human being, which is why, you know, yeah, you're doing so well and so many other performers are doing well as all yeah. well as well. And yeah. I think that, you know, the brands are feeling it. Mm -hmm. Like I can tell you as a producer, yeah, you know, they are seeing the power that OnlyFans has. They are seeing, you know, that girls are, you know, taking more agency over their career. And some girls are just dropping out of shooting for brands altogether because they're like, I don't have to. I'm making right. enough on OnlyFans. Right. So um, I, I've definitely noticed that brands have kind of been like leaning more towards trying to incorporate what the model wants to do mm -hmm. into their scenes. I mean, definitely not all of them. Right. But I have seen like a trend. So I think the adult industry is kind of changing already because of that. Yeah. I'm actually doing a really cool project right now. I'm not allowed to say anything about it, but it does like, it's literally like a story about my life. Like mm -hmm. I wrote it or I helped write it. And I think that is like a huge thing for me. Cause like, honestly, this kind of sounds bad, but like my fans, I feel like they don't even care much about the porn part of it anymore. They just like, like me as a person, mm -hmm. like a lot of the requests I get on my only fans are like, we want to see what you're doing every day and, like, just send videos of, like, you driving around or, like, getting your Starbucks for the day or, like, whatever. Like, they don't even care about seeing, like, actual porn scenes anymore. Yeah. So I feel like that's important. No, that makes sense. I mean, people, especially now, especially, like, through the pandemic and probably, you know, now that we're coming out of it, like, people crave connection with people right. because so many people were so isolated. Yeah. And we become more isolated as a society anyways. Like the more connected we are, like totally. the less connected we are. Totally. So that absolutely makes sense to me. Yeah. I like it that way. I love like connecting with my fans and like knowing like while wow, this person like found me on the internet, now they want to like get to know me. Yeah. And now they know me. Like I have one fan who's like met my family. Like <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah, at AVN. Um, John Chan, if you're listening to this. <laughs> um, he's like just been a fan like basically since – the beginning of my career and we were at AVN and I was at my booth. He came to say hi. And my mom and my sister happened to like stop by my booth to like drop off something. And I was like, John, do you want to like meet my family? <laughs> and he's like, he's like, yeah. So they met and I'm like, now we're even like closer. Like that's yeah. like kind of the relationship that I want to have with my fans. Cause I don't want to just like be talking to like random strangers and like, mm -hmm. they just like, yes, they want sex videos out of me, but, like, I'm also a person, so mm -hmm. it's kind of cool to, like, get both. Yeah, I mean, with the OnlyFans, you're always going to get, like, that core group of kind of hardcore friends who do want to know you as a person. Yeah. And then you're going to get, you know, the people who just want your sex videos, and that's fine. Like, right. and it's a platform that can can be all of those things. Yeah. Which is so cool. Yeah. So speaking of your personal life, okay. I know that you recently took a break. Yes. Because you had a spinal cord injury. Is that right? Yeah. So in April of this year, like four months ago, I was completely paralyzed from the neck down. That's fucking crazy. Like literally could not even stand up. I couldn't walk. I, my hands were stuck like this. Like I literally couldn't even use my hands. I had to use talk to text on my phone. And they found out it was a vitamin B12 deficiency. Cause like I had been feeling like really weak and tired all the time. Like I, I also was not eating well. Like I'm not very good like with eating. I'm not a great eater. I have like the worst appetite ever. So I wasn't getting any B12 from not eating and my body like was not absorbing it at all. So finally, like, so it started like my knees started feeling tingly one day and I'm like, all right, whatever, not a big deal. Walk it off. And then it goes down like into my calves. And that's when I probably should have like gone to see a doctor. And even then, like, I'm just like, I'm so stupid. I'm just like, it'll go away. Like, walk it off. It's fine. Shake it off. But that's when I should have gone because I went to go visit my ex at the time um, in New York for his birthday. 
and it was on the way back, March 21st. I'm walking through JFK airport. And as I'm walking to my gate, my legs stopped working. Like I could not take one more step. Like it took every ounce of energy for me to like move one foot in front of the other. Somehow I like made it to my gate and I almost missed my flight and I'm on the plane and I'm like, okay, fuck, I can't walk. What do I do now? Like what happens? So I'm really good with like survival skills. So I was like, I'm like, okay, I get the flight attendant and I'm like, I need a wheelchair. And she's like, okay, like, are you okay? What happened? Cause you didn't get on the plane in a wheelchair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm like, no, I'm not okay. Like I cannot feel my legs. So she gets me in a wheelchair and finally like I get home. And as soon as I land, I go straight to the emergency room and I'm like, I cannot feel my entire body. My legs are not working. Like every time I try to take a step, it's like all of my energy is going into taking a step. And they didn't admit me. They were like, nothing's wrong with you. So I'm like, okay, obviously there is something wrong with me. So two days later, I'm struggling for my life at this point. And I go back into the emergency room. The doctor literally tells me, oh, you're just uncomfortable. <sighs> yeah. And I'm like, excuse me, ma'am. I'm like, I cannot walk because you can't like see anything that was wrong with me. Like mm -hmm. from the outside, I was like, I need you to do tests. I was like, I'm requesting a full x-ray of my body. I want to know everything that's going on inside my body. And they didn't do it. So I end up seeing like an outside neurologist who had nothing to do like with this insurance company. And I just paid out of pocket because I'm like, I need to know what's happening. Yeah. And she was the one who got me admitted to the hospital because she um, she saw me once the week before. And she like wrote in her notes that like last week she walked in here and this week she's in a wheelchair. She can't even move. So apparently like a legal thing is like if a doctor calls another doctor and says this person has to be admitted, they have to do it like mm -hmm. legally. So finally I get admitted and I'm in like the actual hospital for like four days and then they transferred me to a physical therapy rehab. And I was there all of April. So I went from like literally not being able to move my entire body to like, I'm pretty good now. Like when I walk, if I show you, you can see that I walk weird. But like no one ever even notices it until I say something. But all because I fucking didn't have vitamin B12. They, it was like undetectable. Like they couldn't find any in my body. So apparently like that inflames your spinal cord if you don't have vitamin B12. So they just pump me full of vitamin B12 and I still take it every single day. And I was going to say, you must be taking supplements. Yeah. And my doctor said that like for the rest of my life, each month I have to get a vitamin B12 shot like forever. <laughs> so I'm like, shit. That's kind of like a common thing though that, that, that you can get like, cause it's good for your, like for energy levels and stuff. Like yeah. when you see like those health bars, like I see options for vitamin B12 shots. Right. Yeah. I didn't So know. it doesn't sound like something that you need to go to like the hospital for, which is kind of good. Right. Right. But it had like gotten to the point and I had been sick for like months before, like this started like a couple months before I even went to the hospital and I couldn't figure out what was going on. Like I was sleeping through shoots. Like I'm never fucking late. I mean, I was like today, but that was no, that's fine. <laughs> my dog was throwing up. That's okay. Fine. But um, I like, I'm always on top of my shit. I always know like what's going on. I always have my schedule. I always am like on time and it happens like three, four times to where like I slept through my alarms. I was like an hour late for scenes. I was like fucking up my schedule, everything. One day I like passed out on set and then they were like, okay, well you have to go home. You can't do the scene now. So did people think you were on drugs? Yes. Of course they did. Yeah. Because that's like the most logical explanation. Right. And it did seem like I was on drugs, I'm yeah. sure. But I don't like my memory went away. Like I have no recollection of like the month before I went to the hospital. I don't even Jeez. remember going to the hospital. I don't remember like being there. Yeah. So, so yeah, everyone totally thought I was on drugs and I'm like, I'm not, but I also don't know what the hell is going on. And George, um, my agent's assistant, because my agent has been like, um, he's been sick, like dealing with kind of the same thing. Like he's having to relearn how to walk and everything because he had COVID, then he had pneumonia. And so he wasn't even dealing with things. It was his assistant. And he was like, um, he found like a place for me to go. Like he had it all set up and everything that I was going to like go to like an eating disorder place just because like I have trouble eating. Like I'm just horrible with it. But I'm like, I'm not doing it on purpose. Like, I'm not like starving mm -hmm. myself on purpose. I'm just like, I can't eat. 
So he thought it was that. So we like already had a place to go and everything. I was about to go. And that's when like it got really, really bad. And that's when I went to the hospital. So but yeah. Um, how wait, so how because it sounds like you were kind of like immobile for a few days before they admitted you to the hospital. Like how yeah. long were you like wheelchair kind of bound? So 10 days from the day I landed from New York. That was the day I initially went to the hospital until 10 days after that. That was when they finally admitted me. Um, yeah, from that time, that period of time was like a huge difference. Like I could walk a little bit to begin with. And by the end, I couldn't even stand up or move my hands. So that must have been so fucking scary. It was terrifying. Like I thought I was about to die. Like I didn't know what was going on. And they told me had I waited even like two more weeks, I would be dead. Yeah. And I'm like, why did no one do anything when I first went into the hospital? Like, I'm not just making things up. I don't just want to hang out at the hospital. Yeah. Like, it was horrible. I could not even believe. But yeah. Wow. Yeah. Physical therapy, like, really, like, saved me. Like, I, um, I went in there not even being able to walk and I walked out of there. And I told them, like, when I got there, I don't remember this, but <laughs> apparently I was like, when I get out of here, because they told me I would be there three weeks. And I was like, three weeks, that's nothing. I was like, I will be walking out of here by then. And I did it. Um, like, I like made it a whole thing. Like when I left the hospital, they still had to like wheel me out. Like legally they have to. But I'm like, let me out of the wheelchair and at least let me walk through the doors. So I can say that like I walked out of out of this establishment. So... <laughs> So has yeah. that like kind of changed your view like on life since then? Because that sounds totally. kind of, it's, I mean, that's pretty much a near death experience. Like, do yeah. you see things differently? Totally, totally. Like before this, I was, I kind of like given up on life a little bit. Like I just didn't really care about anything. I was just like going through the motions. I was bored, whatever. And now I'm like, I love my life. Like I didn't realize that like. I had so much to live for. Like now I want to do everything. Like I want to, I have not like spent one day by myself since I've been back in LA. Like I've been with friends all the time. Cause I'm like, this is what life is about. Like experiences and like knowing people and like actually doing things instead of like sitting in my house like, and watching TV all day. And that's yeah. like what I was doing before. Cause yeah. Know. It's so easy to get stuck in that rut. And sometimes you need something like that to really like, jolt you out yeah. of it so in a strange way it was almost it was a blessing. a blessing yeah I really like I'm actually thankful that it happened because god knows like where I would be now if it, this didn't happen to me it's so crazy like, it totally has like changed my entire mindset and like made me a completely different person wow yeah that's amazing so crazy well one of my other, one of my other questions actually I don't know maybe it kind of maybe you sort of already answered it in a way but um, so being in the entertainment industry, especially when it's as stigmatized as ours, um, can take a toll on us. So like, are there anything, like, what do you do to protect your mental health? But do you feel like maybe you weren't doing that before this? And then now this is like changed. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. So like before I, like my thing, I love to work. Like I always want to be working constantly 24 seven. And like there were months where I was working like 28, 29 days a month. And I only had like literally two days off every month. I just wanted to work that much. But now I'm like, okay, as much as like I want to work, I need to like take time for myself and like my mental health, just have days for myself to where like I do whatever the hell I want to do. And I don't like feel pressured to like make people happy or like try to please people because I'm so bad at that. Like, <laughs> like just making sure everybody's happy. Yeah. People pleasing is is definitely like a, uh, one of my um, uh, bad characteristics that yeah. I, I got to work on. Yeah, same. It's hard. It is hard. But it's like you want everyone to like you. Yeah. <laughs> you, like you see like your validation and, you know, how other people see you. It's And that's, you know, a social creature that's creatures. That's how we're built. So it's yeah, it's tough to, to, to not be like that. And then also, too, I think social media makes it like even worse because totally. then like you see your validation in like number of likes or right. like comments or and stuff like that. Exactly. I do think it's like super important to like have a life outside of porn. Mm -hmm. And I didn't before because I like didn't really talk to my family much before. Mm -hmm. And like I like I would talk to them occasionally. Like we didn't like have a 
anything bad with each other. But like since this whole thing happened to me, I got like super close with my family because I was like, I don't have anyone else. Like Mm -hmm. my friends were not there. My friends who I thought were friends (laughs) weren't there to like be with me through the whole thing. Um, I told my mom one day and she flew out and was here the next day. So yeah, like it was good to like actually like have people outside of the industry that I could rely on and like have a support system. I feel like that's a huge like mental health thing for being in the industry. Yeah. That's so helpful. A lot of girls that I know who kind of like fall down this rabbit hole of like depression and self harm and drugs and stuff like that. Um, don't have that kind of outside support. That's right. Like the industry don't aren't connected with their family. Yeah. And that can be so hard. Yeah. You know, I definitely feel like family is a huge part of it. And like, it's sad that like so many girls don't have that or mm-hmm. like even not just girls, just like any performer. Like, and I, it was kind of like my choice. Like I just like, wasn't reaching out to my family. Like it wasn't that they weren't there. I just like, wasn't making an effort to like have a relationship with them. So yeah. Now I'm, like, really focused on, like, okay, my family is, like, actually here to, like, take care of me and, like, they actually give a fuck about me. So it's nice to, like, I'm so thankful that I have, like, a family dynamic. Yeah. You're really lucky to have that. Yeah. Because so many people don't. Yeah. I didn't even realize before. Wow. Well, thank you, Gianna. That was a crazy fucking story. Oh, my yeah. God. I feel like so crazy. we can't top that. So I'm just going <laughs> to like end it here because it was pretty it was pretty heavy. Yeah. I'm glad you're OK. Yeah. I mean, everything's great now. Now it's just muscle strength is what I'm working on. And I'll be back to work in no time. And just- lots of vitamin B12. Have yeah. you changed your diet a little bit? Yeah. Now I like have like a little subscription to like food things that like they come in jars so I just like heat them up so like I have no excuse to not eat so yeah yeah yeah. it's kind of it's kinda nice but yeah food delivery is great yeah so yeah I'm focused on my health and exercise and mental health and yeah I feel like I'm doing good now awesome I'm glad to hear it so can you tell everybody um where they can find you on social media not not on Instagram I guess cuz you yeah. just got deleted. Literally but. my Instagram got deleted last night but so <laughs> my Twitter is at Gianna underscore Dior triple X. Gianna is G I A N N A underscore D I O R X X X. Um and then my OnlyFans is Gianna Dior fans.com. Perfect. That's about all I got because fuck Instagram, right? <laughs> well, if you get another Instagram, I'm sure you'll post it on your Twitter. So I have my backup. You. If you guys want to follow my backup, it's kind of bullshit. It's Gianna underscore again. <laughs> so wait, is it Gianna underscore and then the word again? Again. Yeah. <laughs> again. <laughs> I, oh, I don't even know if I'm going to use it now. Now I'm just like pissed at Instagram. Like I don't even care about doing it anymore. Yeah. No, it's got to be really so frustrating because you. this is not the first time you've been deleted. Yeah. So I'm like, it's just going to happen again. I don't feel like doing it all again. Yeah. And then having it get deleted. So. Yeah. Well, people can always connect with you personally on yeah. OnlyFans, OnlyFans and get to know you even better. It's where I am all the time. And you guys can follow me on Instagram for now. Um, who knows tomorrow <laughs> um, at Holly Randall and on Twitter I'm at Holly Randall I am shadow banned on both platforms so if you can't find me and actually the best way to find any performer on either platform because often the actual performers are shadow banned and what you get when you search their name in the app are fake accounts which like they won't delete um, go to Google and if you Google like holly randall instagram then my actual instagram account will come up through google because google doesn't google just goes after traffic right but if you search in like the instagram app or in twitter because then the shadow ban makes you invisible okay but if you search for people google and then you like their whatever social media platform plus their name you'll actually find their real account that's how i make sure that i find real accounts when i tag people interesting that's good to know okay yeah it's a good workaround so Instagram is Holly Randall. Twitter is Holly Randall. And of course, if you want to support this podcast, go to patreon.com slash Holly Randall Unfiltered. We were actually filming this live on my Patreon um, for the second time in like almost a year and a half. So it's been really, this is only my second in-person interview 
since like kind of the end of quarantine. Oh, sure. yeah, okay. I know. So that's also why this place is such a mess. <laughs> you can't tell from this site because it's all nice and clean, but back there it's a little messy. <laughs> but you know, I'm doing my best. Um, Gianna, thank you so much for coming on. Thank you for having me. This was so much fun. Yeah. One of my very first podcasts. I know. I want to keep doing them now. I'm like, you're now you're a fucking expert, right? I'm a pro now. Yeah, you're a pro. All right, guys, thank you so much for tuning in, and I'll see you possibly next week. I might take next week off, but um, if not, I'll see you next week. And if I take next week off, I'll be back the week after. Sorry, I have a lot going on right now. All right, thank you for watching. Bye. <laughs>